we uh, as a club are able to do all we do, thanks to all of you who volunteer, starting with the club officers. So we have, um, besides myself, Nancy Riker, immediate past president, our president-elect, uh, Marilyn. Um, we have um, Whitney Dahl, our secretary, treasurer, uh, is Leopold Wildenauer, our sergeant at arms, as you know, is Sterling Hoffman. And we have Mimi Condon as our um, ombuds person. So uh, thank you all. And I just want to quickly recognize who's serving. Um, the club wouldn't be what it is if it weren't for all those serving in these various capacities. Uh, we really make things happen. I just want to show the names and the functions. Many are functions more than committees per se, classifications, club history. We all know that uh, Monica Smith does that. Um, Vic Pyle will be speaking momentarily. We have um, several what are called avenues of service. And one, the first one pertains to the actual governance of the club itself. Uh, so yesterday I had lunch with uh, the chair of the finance committee, Lynn Hollick. Um, we have a, for the club, we have public relations, which is chaired by Salvador Farfán, <laughs> who will be joining us uh, in making some remarks. Our newsletter is done by Arthur Landwehr. Um, and then, you know, I'm not going to read everything, but um, we have our own foundation. Lynn Hollick will be handling that this year. And the president of our foundation is Lisa McCurdy. Membership. Um, this is a very important part of uh, the life of the club. And uh, we'll be hearing from Marilyn Cruz. Uh, I want to thank uh, Russ Savage for serving, handling the member moments, and the others who uh, also are very active in life. We haven't been doing movie night or uh, the U Club happy hour, but we hope to get back to those. Um, all right, international. We're a very international club, as you all know, and uh, we'll be hearing from Steve Liston. Uh, speaking about the Embassy and International Relations, as it's now called, formerly Embassy Relations Twin Clubs. Um, Octavian's continued handling the Global Grant Scholar um, uh, service. We'll be hearing from May O'Brien as regards to International Service Committee. And uh, Ken Kimbrough next week will make, be making an announcement, follow-up announcement regarding uh, our own foundation, well, the campaign we do every year for the Rotary Foundation. And uh, I'm going to be checking in with Robert Mines regarding World Press Photo. I'm not sure what the plans are. Uh, youth, uh, my theme uh, that I picked this year as for my year as president is Rotarians Engaging Youth. And so here's a big part of the connection for peace and the environment. So I just want to visually recognize all of those here. Um, thank you so much for your service. Community, we're very present. The community, we'll be hearing from Khaled um, regarding the Community Engagement Committee um, and from Maryland regarding community service. And I want to recognize all the others. Uh, Brian will be speaking about trees for the capital, trees for the world. Sheldon regarding returns for the equality for black people and Shelley uh, Walter Reed. So we're gonna get updates from uh, a select number of committee chairs. Um, wish we could include everybody. <laughs> so uh, take it away. Okay. okay, thank you, Bill. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. It's a beautiful day and uh, we are so fortunate in this club to have such uh, active members that 
keep the program committee on our toes. We need to be on our toes as, as much as possible because all of you are a part of our committee. And we know that that makes a lot of difference with the quality of our programs. So uh, I'm encouraging you to continue to keep your eyes and ears open for good speakers. Uh, ideally, we'll have a lot of competition so that we can build, build a, continue to build a good efforts that Steve and his committee set up last year. Uh, speaking of Steve, I am pleased that, to know that, let you know that he's, uh, he and I are continuing to work very closely together and we, he will stay with us and be very helpful with our committee, particularly uh, with uh, the follow-up that we've had from last year and in Zoom producers. So that is a key uh, element of our program committee. So thank you, Steve, for your continuing service to programs. Uh, so I'm also very open to your feedback on programs. We haven't, since I've been involved this time around, I haven't done a uh, evaluation of, of our programs, but I know that that's been done in the past. So you can keep your eyes and ears open for that. We'll get around to doing an evaluation so that we can make sure that we're uh, getting everybody's feedback. But please keep in mind the fact that we uh, live in a, such a wonderful city with so many interesting people. Keep those people in mind and let us know uh, who you are thinking of and how we can support uh, bringing those quality programs to our club. Thank you. Next up will be Salvador. Really the four main components of our PR efforts are our website, our newsletter progress, our social media channels, and our YouTube channel, which I hope um, all of you have had a chance to uh, visit recently. Uh, we have done what the best we can really to update all of our all that channel as soon as possible as soon as the uh, the speaker comes on we record it obviously and and put it up there for for everybody's use so if you haven't subscribed to the channel please go ahead and subscribe we have a grand total of 30 subscribers so uh, once we reach the 100 subscriber um lip, uh, milestone, we can then get uh, start reaping some of the benefits from um, the YouTube um, platform. Uh, let me talk about uh, progress, our newsletter. Arthur Lanthware has been doing a, a great job at uh, being the editor-in-chief of that. Um, he mainly aggregates all the information that comes through the website, um, the calendar, and also uh, the emails that we get all received. So thank you, Arthur, for that. I know he's not on the call, but uh, I would like to thank him. Um, another aspect is, um, well, here, I'll advance the slides here. The, the social media, oh, please email him at pr at dcrotaryclub.org with anything that you'd like to have included in the, in the newsletter. Right, let, and let me just add, Salvador, it truly just as with the um, program committee, everyone in the club is part of this committee. We need your feed and we need your contributions, your stories. Okay, just wanna make that right. clear. These are some stats that uh, past president Lisa sent me regarding our social media channels. As you can see, we're very, very active and the most popular ones. We still haven't found anybody that would like to get us into the TikTok world. So if you are into TikTok, mm -hmm. let me know and uh, we would like to start a, a TikTok channel. Uh, and this is the schedule that, that Lisa puts out weekly. As you can see, she promotes our speakers, um, any activities that are uh, fed to her. Um, and, and exactly to echo what the uh, President Bill just said, if you are chairing an activity and like for it to be publicized, please send it to both um, Arthur and Lisa so they can be shared uh, with our channels. Thank you so much, Salvador. You're doing a fantastic job and you have a wonderful team. Arthur and Lisa um, are you know, really on top of it. And I think we're improving our internal communications uh, and getting the word out more. Yeah, I like to. 
as you're recognizing members, let's also recognize Sterling because he has provided us obviously some great imagery for the website and for social media also. So uh, it makes mm -hmm. such an impact when you start with good imagery. Uh, so thank you, Sterling, for that. Right, that's a very important part of it. Thank you, Sterling. Um, I'm currently serving as acting membership chair. As you know, um, as you know, uh, Catherine had to leave our club due to many um, incidents that occurred in her life this year. And uh, Lisa has now joined me as co-chair. And I'm pleased to announce that we have six new members of all different types of membership and it's growing, see and now in Bill's term. And uh, uh, one of the things we've done different this year is that we reinstated the in-person fireside chats and Alex too, who, who is um, who joined our club uh, responsive, res they've responded positively to that. And I think Alex for taking the lead on that. We had a great turnout at the one we hosted at Max's last month. Uh, we are also uh, engaging our club 40 and Marcus Soriano is taking the lead in that initiative and he is coordinating monthly or bi-monthly events um, to keep our young members engaged and that's part of membership retention and uh and the membership committee is looking at what is it that we could be doing about you know many people have the conception that the membership committee only focuses on recruiting new members and though that's a major component we're also looking at at, at you know at the club as a whole on um, what we could be doing differently and that's why the committee is composed of past presidents of our younger members of our mid-age members so we know that we're making decisions that will benefit the club as a whole and not just one certain group and we are also uh, continuing with members of the month and recognizing our active members and all that they're doing and lastly, we are staying relevant on our website and making sure um, that our website is constantly updated with pictures or events or uh, quotes that are relevant. Uh, when Colin uh, Howe picture and a quote remembering him as a, a, a great leader in our country. And um, so those are the things the membership committee is doing. And Nancy will speak on the other segment that we're doing. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Uh, glad you could join us even from a distance. So Nancy, why don't you compliment uh, what Marilyn just told us, uh, comment a little on the um, program that we have for guides for new members, how that's coming along, the red, the blue, et cetera. Yes, we wanna welcome all of our new members and support them the best we can. And we do that with our new member guides. Um, all of our, uh, I have been through all of the new members we've had in the last couple of years to make sure that they're on their way to their blue badges. And actually, I found out that many of them have finished the uh, checklist and we've ordered the blue badges for you. And that will be when you come to the first meeting in person, the badge will be available and we'll be thrilled to uh, uh, officially pin it on you. Actually, it has a magnet, I hope. Um, but I have assigned um, all new members with guides, and um, I think they're great matches. So if you're a new member, please um, continue to work with your guide. And guides, please continue to work with your new members so we can get through the checklist and get everybody officially graduated to their official blue badge. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Nancy. And I just want to say that's one more reason why we look forward to resuming in-person meetings. We're working on that. Uh, I do also want to mention what Nancy does in terms of outreach and expressions. Nancy, why don't you just take 30 seconds to say something about that too? Yes, um, and this is important for all members. Um, you know, we have celebrations and we have uh, sorrows that we want to support our members with, you know, in. And so if you know of anybody uh, that, that, the dessert, that would, we'd like uh, our, uh, our membership to support with cards, flowers, um, emails, uh, we do birthdays um, and anniversaries for our older members. We send out cards. I send out cards mm -hmm. for any occasion that requires a, a special attention uh, to our members. So please keep me posted because I learn about it really through you all. 
Um, and uh, we've had some recent deaths and uh, we've been able to uh, reach out to those members in sympathy with our condolences. And so, and we've had some babies born. And so we got, we have all of that to celebrate and special baby cards. I love buying those. So please let me know any way that we can support our members. Uh, thanks again, Nancy. You do uh, a great job in all those ways. And uh, the, only, the last thing I want to add under the membership committee is just that we have had three meetings specifically to discuss new membership categories. Um, recommendations will go to the board shortly. So you'll be hearing about that. Uh, these, uh, I won't go into the details of those categories, but you'll be hearing about it soon. And I do once again want to uh, thank Russ Savage for uh, coordinating the member moments and Marcus Sordiano for his leadership with Club 40, which are our members who are 40 and under. All right, um, we're ready now to go into the international. Uh, as you may have heard, the name of the committee is now Embassy and International Relations. The chair is uh, Steve Liston. Steve, I turn it over to you for an update. Okay, thank you, President Bill. I guess I just wanna start by saying how impressed I always am by all the activity, all the stuff people are doing and in all these different areas. And it's just so much fun to be a part of it. So thank you for that. And I uh, really appreciate uh, Dick Pyle stepping up for program and very glad to be helpful there. And uh, just thanks to all the volunteers who make that work every week. Um, so Embassy and International Relations, we changed the name to better reflect sort of the broader mandate that, that our committee uh, has. We are not everyone is a member of our committee, unlike programs and some of the others, but everyone's welcome. So you can all join. We have a big group. Uh, we meet uh, every month via Zoom right now at 6, uh, 6 p.m. Our next meeting is next Tuesday. It's always the second Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. And if you're interested in joining us, send me an email or look for the link. It's, it's uh, announced. Uh, we'll be happy to have you join us, um, even if you just want to find out what we're doing. And I just want to quickly uh, list sort of what, what it is we cover. So first is we help the program. Uh, we work with the program committee in terms of uh, getting ambassadors and sometimes other diplomats in the area as speakers. Um, our next ambassador, and this will be of interest particularly to one of our guests today, is going to be the ambassador of Zimbabwe on, Dece on December 1st. Thank you, Dr. Sam and Munya for, for enabling that, helping that to, to happen. Uh, we try to have about one ambassador a quarter is our goal. Uh, sometimes we have a couple more, sometimes we have or one more, sometimes we have one less, depends on how things work, but that's, our, that's sort of our objective. And it's a really great opportunity uh, to try to learn about um, these countries, their relations with the United States and so on. So we're very appreciative for that. Uh, second, we plan the ambassadorial reception, the diplomatic reception, uh, uh, which <laughs> of course has been put off a couple of years because of COVID. We're still working on it. We still hope to go to the uh, residence of the ambassador of Tunisia. Uh, we are connecting with the new ambassador uh, this is the third ambassador we're working with from Tunisia, but we're still hoping to go forward with that. Thank you to past president David Klaus for all his efforts there. It's an enormous effort, it requires a lot of volunteers, and we're, we're really grateful for that. So stay tuned. Uh, we won't be doing it this year, but we hope next year, maybe spring, maybe fall. We're not quite sure yet, but we really like to do it. It was a great success when we did it in 2019 at the Chilean embassy, and we really would like to do that again. Uh, third, in connection with uh, these, these other activities, um, we work with the, mem with the uh, membership committee to propose ambassadors as honorary members uh, of the club, usually in connection with them speaking, but it may be other, may be other reasons as well. Uh, fourth is we uh, uh, manage the twin club relationships that we have. 
which uh, Mark Wilson has taken the lead on this. Thank you, Mark. He does a great job of letting all of our twin clubs know about our meetings and keeping us in touch. And for those of you who don't know, we have 12 twin club uh, relations, relationships. So, uh, and I just wanna read them quickly. The Rotary Club of Santiago, Rotary Club of San Salvador Maquilichuat, uh, the Rotary Club of Paris Academy uh, and uh, in Greece, the, Ro the Rotary Club of Athenae. Uh, we have Rotary Club Apia Antica in Italy, uh, Rotary Club of Tokyo in Japan, the Rotary Club of Manila in the Philippines. We just heard from uh, past president a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the Rotary Club of Edinburgh in Scotland, who often are visiting for our meetings. Rotary Club of Seoul in South Korea. The Rotary Club of Taipei in Taiwan. And the Rotary Club of Bangkok in Thailand. And our newest is the Rotary Club of Tunis Doyen uh, in Tunisia. So all of these are managed by a particular individual. Um, and if you're interested in knowing more about that uh, twin club relationship, uh, please let me know. And the last thing that we do, I told you there's a lot, um, is we support the um, International Service Committee in their activities. And the way we do that is we send letters to ambassadors letting them know about grants. We also support the foundation in terms of disaster relief grants. And so uh, we, we try to make sure that the ambassadors are aware of these. And uh, we actually are planning to meet with the ambassador of Turkey soon based on uh, the letter that we sent about grants, the global grant that's been done there that we participated in. So I'll stop there and thank you very much, President Bill, for the opportunity. We'd love to have anyone join us. That was great. And indeed, Steve, um, we have a very international club and you're part of what makes it so international. <laughs> you and a number of others, uh, thank David, et cetera, May. It's really great to be a part of this club. Uh, I'm very international, as you know. So uh, speaking of May O'Brien, May. So I'm May O'Brien with the International Service Committee. I'm here with my co-chairs, Mimi Kanda and Maria Nelly Platasic. So today I am not uh, gonna go over our international grants. I'm just gonna go over what we do basically, because we only have a very short time, three minutes. So uh, basically our mission is like the Rotary Foundation to advance international understanding, goodwill and peace by improving health, providing quality education, improving the environment and, eliminating, and alleviating poverty. So what has been the ISC impact in the last few years? We have had grants in 32 countries and counting, Asia, Europe, Middle East, Africa, Latin America, the Caribbean, um, and we're looking forward to more this year. We've gotten a lot of grants, some from Zimbabwe, DRC, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll, uh, more about that later. Basically, the fall, uh, we spend most of our time on international grants. And so how do you start on international grants? Basically, members of our club visit a Rotary Club overseas and make new friends, or they go to the international convention. This year, it's in Houston. And they bring back ideas for new projects. So how you start is you work with a foreign Rotary Club on an international humanitarian grant and put together a proposal. Or you can partner with other Rotary Clubs on their big projects. You can participate with the ISC Technical Review Panel to evaluate grants and the club announces these grants in December of every year. And you, as Steve said, you can work with the Embassy Relations Committee on briefings for ambassadors for ISC grants. And this is a picture from our Cambodia grant. The whole idea is that we partner with other clubs for impact. And it's fan tra transformative, not just for the beneficiary communities, but for ourselves, because we actually get a lot more out of it than we give. So the other ways of participating is to join the district's International Service Committee. You can participate and volunteer for World Press Photo. Unfortunately, it was canceled this year. You can volunteer for the Intercountry Committees or the Rotary Action Groups. You can volunteer for the Peace Working Group, which Bill Dent has talked to you about. Um, there are lots of other ways, write articles for the newsletter, recommend new programs, or support the national, the new National Museum and Center for Service, of which Brian Baird, who is here, the congressman, is one of the leaders of that effort. And Maria Nelly is our key person in our club uh, working on that effort. 
uh, or you can join the leadership team. We're always looking for new blood and, um, and a lot of help because we have a lot of work to do. So in the last couple of weeks, I told you about Rotary's biggest humanitarian mission, which is to end polio. That is totally achievable. And I ask you to donate to end polio, and a lot of you did. So thank you very much for your donations. I'm here pitching for Ken Kimbrough, who is our Rotary Foundation chair. Um, November is Rotary Foundation Month. And all of the grants that we do, the, especially the global grants, are because you have given to the Rotary Foundation. And this helps, this helps strengthen our peace efforts, provide clean water, grow local economies, support basic education and literacy, save mothers and children, protect the environment, and fight diseases like polio. So one of the major programs in the foundation area is every Rotarian every year. This is our basic program. And it asks every Rotarian to support the Rotary Foundation by making a recurring gift on Rotary Direct of at least $100 and become a sustaining member. In order to get uh, matching funding from the Rotary Foundation and from our district, at least 50% of our club has to give at least $25. And every year we seem to come up short. And so we're always rounding up new, new donors around this time. Uh, and the 50% is very important to the International Service Committee. Why? Because we need that matching funding. Last year, we had three global grants totaling $16,500. That was our club donation. And we asked our district and the Rotary Foundation for matching. Based on their formulas, we got 50,400 in matching. That's huge. Not only that, for our Zambia grant, we got an additional 25,000 from the Gates Foundation. So grand total, 75,450. That is a huge return on investment for 16,500. And, and it depends on you giving that at $25 to the Rotary Foundation every year. So if you can afford to give $25 a quarter or $8.34 a month, you can help us make the world a better place. And so why not do it? <laughs> the last slide. So if you want more information about the ISC, contact me, 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 or Mar Marianelli, and we'd be glad to help you. And we're inviting everybody to join. Thank you. Thank you, May. And I commend you all for doing so much. Uh, it really is amazing. <laughs> and again, a reflection of how international our club is. I just want to mention that uh, the International Service Committee is hosting the Peace Working Group. And uh, I'll just uh, give my one minute remark in that okay. regard uh, in advance. Sure. Uh, and we had our very first meeting. Monday of last week. We're off to a good start. We'll be reporting out as there are developments, but we now know those who are interested. Uh, we'll be working with uh, intercountry committees as well as the new Youth and Peace and in Action Initiative of Peter Kyle. Uh, all right, we're going to move on to the community avenue of service starting with Sheldon Ray, right on time. Thank you, Bill. Um, as most of you know, the Rotarians for Equality for Black People Committee was begun by Lisa Cohen nearly a year and a half ago. I was asked to co-chair it about a year ago with her and then later with Kenny Barnes. Kenny is now the senior advisor to the uh, committee. And the, this is our first iteration of our mission statement. The committee will continue to raise awareness regarding systemic racism by engaging with the uninformed as well as the informed in a safe space to discuss any aspect of racism's history in the United States, as well as the current and future environment. We would like our members and others to not shy away from these issues when and wherever they may arise and do whatever we can to forward this cause. Uh, since the beginning, the actions the committee has taken have been several. We have meetings twice a month, two, Tuesdays at 6 p.m., and have had numerous very candid discussions regarding race issues, misunderstandings, critical race theories, uh, and buried Black history in America. 
Also, Metro Bethesda has been very active with us. Um, thanks to Linda Solomon, uh, we initiated working with the mayor's office and the administration of vaccines last year. And some of our members were literally beating on doors to encourage vaccinations in Anacostia. Um, Nancy Riker, Lynn Hollock, Bill Busker, and others. The other thing we did is initiate a long-term relationship with the historic Mount Zion Cemetery, the oldest black cemetery in Washington in May. And we expect that to continue for decades to come. And as far as future plans and goals, um, we have had multiple uh, Mount Zion Cemetery work days and historic uh, briefings there. We had um, one on Juneteenth with over 30 people. And we have one again this Sunday morning at 10 o'clock initiated by the Rotaract Club. So we'll be joining them as well as um, Metro Bethesda members at 10 o'clock this Sunday. If you'd like to come, please email me. I can send you directions. And one of the initiatives with the cemetery is to co-fund a caretaker shed. Many of you know that there is a burial vault on the grounds that was used during the Underground Railroad. It currently houses all the tools for upkeep and the cemetery would like to build a caretaker shed so we can get those things out of this historic building. The cost is about $3,000. Metro Bethesda has offered to match funds with funds from our club. We have a board meeting on the 22nd and hopefully this will be approved. Uh, one of our other goals is to raise awareness in Washington about this commit. Um, people have no idea that DC Rotary has incubated this committee and that it's very active in the community. Um, I think Kenny Barnes and Donnie Shaw are gonna work on possible publicity for the committee and DC and Metro Bethesda Rotary's involvement. We'd also like to involve more Rotaractors and young Rotarians in our committee, as well as the district. Uh, Dolores Edwards Harding is our future district governor and she has been involved in some meetings. I her to continue to do so. Uh, another initiative again with the cemetery is there's going to be a vo Voice of Zion opera, I, hopefully on Emancipation Day in April next year that will be about um, certain members born at Mount Zion Cemetery and we expect to participate in that. We also expect to have uh, kind of educational field trips roughly every quarter with members or in anyone else with, who would like to attend uh, the African American Museum for sure, uh, Frederick Douglass House, a Mount Zion Church event, African Art Museum, et cetera. So, so we're very, very hopeful to, to continue our momentum and raise awareness and increase our numbers. And please email me with any questions. Thank you again, Lisa, for creating this and Kenny and all, all the others who've been involved. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, um, we've got a few more people here in the lineup. Uh, Brian Ingram, you're next, uh, Trees for the Capitol. Thank you, President Bill. It's really nice to see everyone today. Um, so hearing all of the inspiring uh, programs that are happening right now, it's uh, I think there's no lack of opportunities for people to get involved. So it's uh, encouraging to hear all the updates. I want to speak quickly about uh, Trees for the Capital, which again has expanded into Trees for the World. Uh, we all heard, or some of us heard that attended a few weeks ago, past President Jackie Rodriguez from, from the Philippines, who was introduced by Ambassador Babe from the Philippines. Um, we're expanding in a process of expansion, which is very exciting. In the midst of COVID, um, we've had some pauses, I think, like many people in terms of the tactical side of implementation for uh, the tree planting ceremonies, but this is still something that we're uh, moving forward towards as a goal in partnership with the National Park Service. Uh, Bill and I uh, and Sam and others have been in discussion about how we can have our first in-person tree planting ceremony. We really see this as an opportunity given the, the um, aspects of tree planting that is common to everyone. Um, everyone puts their hands in the soil. There's an aspect of unity around tree planting and reforestation, I think, that reaches into the hearts of everyone, uh, including children. 
Um, so the geospatial intelligence platform allows us to map exactly where each speaker's tree is. And so the vision for this is that each person can see and have their picture, picture perhaps taken with the tree that they're uh, planted in, the, in, in their honor specifically. And that this is a, an opportunity for our club to come together in a way that's meaningful uh, and again, allows us to do things where we expand out the program. Nancy, pre former president, uh, Nancy had a wonderful idea where we go into the wards where there's actually a need for reforestation and, and tree planting. In the Philippines, uh, they're, as Jackie mentioned, they're planning on planting fruit trees and making a requirement for every student to plant a certain number of trees each year before they graduate. So we're looking to set up a meeting with the mayor's office through Linda Solomon to have a discussion about how we could potentially implement something. Uh, and then in terms of international expansion, I was on a phone call this morning uh, with our representative from the Manila Club, our twin uh, club relationship, and discussion specifically around the implementation of the Trees for Capital program. They're in the process of looking at land around the Philippines and in Manila, around the capital. Um, and as Jackie mentioned, this would be something where uh, trees would be planted, fruit trees perhaps, where it creates value uh, in the Philippines for people, not just a, a tree sequestering carbon, but that there, there, there's a, a tangible asset uh, along with the tree. So that's um, the international expansion. Um, and one of the aspects too that I wanted to share with, with the club that I don't think we've had an opportunity to share is around brand sponsorships. So I've started engaging with two different brands. Harmless Harvest is the first one, which is a coconut company uh, that has expanded. They've been able to obtain market share, uh, the top position in the United States for coconut water. Uh, they have a higher price point um, and it's uh, using a specific, a new type of technology called HPP, high pressure, pressure pasteurization. And this process preserves the uh, the nutrient profile, uh, as well as the flavor. So they're doing some wonderful, wonderful things, not only on the product development side, but also on their impact uh, in terms of sustainability and regenerative agriculture. Uh, the second is a, a bank called Aspiration. Uh, I've had communication with the CEO of this company. I believe they've gone public. Um, and they're uh, doing some pretty amazing things. Their tagline is there's a good chance your bank is using money to fund oil projects, that destroy the climate, put your money where your values are and join Aspiration today. It's a pretty bold mission statement, right? Front and center on their webpage. So in terms of brand integration and partnerships, this allows us to expand the program of Trees for the Capital in the world, both domestically and internationally. Um, so these are a couple highlights. Um, Dr. Sam has uh, implementation you, for um, uh, peace polls that we're uh, beginning to roll out uh, as well. So stay tuned. Uh, I hope to have some good news for everyone soon in terms of when we can get to the mall in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere to have our first uh, tree planting ceremony again. Uh, next up is Shelly Williams. Shelly? Thank you, President Bill. Um, well, while everybody's been doing all the hard work of Rotary, we've just been playing a game, uh, which is uh, bingo every third Thursday of the month. So we do it uh, 12 times a year. Uh, and uh, we are on, because of security issues and COVID, we're on a semi-permanent virtual status. This has two effects. One, we have many more players and we have a smaller staff. So we thought we would play bingo with you guys and I'll introduce the, the folks who help uh, do bingo and they'll explain their roles and call out a bingo number. Maybe we'll win a prize. I'd like to first call on Darren Crew, our stalwart member. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you. I really enjoy helping on this, uh, on the Rotary program each month. One of my roles is to put the called numbers into the chat so people can double check if they need to. And each month there are a lot of families of injured service members and a lot of children participating. There is so much excitement from those kids. When they win, they're jumping up and down on their couches and uh, it, it's, it feels good, you know. Uh, you know, it feels like we're giving some joy to these uh, families of service members. And moving on to the short bingo game that Shelly just mentioned, 
The first bingo number is 075. And we chose 75 because this is the 75th anniversary of our support for uh, uh, Walter Reed Bingo. Uh, we started in 1946, so we are 75 years old, and I fit right in. What's the next number? The, the next bingo number is I-27. I-27. We have 20, 27 families playing, average size family, 4.5. That means we have every month about 127 participants and we have to do prizes uh, for many of those and now i'd like to recognize the other stalwart half of, of our uh, team uh, hala vaziri oh. hey everyone i don't know if you can hear me can you hear me yes. oh yes okay well it's nice to be back with you when i was a more official member of the club i always wanted to do walter reed bingo but it never quite worked with my schedule and Shelly was kind enough to ask me to do it with him on Zoom. So my job is to basically tally up all the victorious players while all these kids are, as Darren uh, indicated, jumping up and down on the couch and shouting bingo simultaneously. <laughs> so it's, it's lots of fun. And uh, um, it's making me learn to be a lot faster in terms of counting. So in terms of our bingo game, G57. 57. We give 57 prizes. Those prizes are $10 Amazon gift cards. Uh, the USO pays uh, $75 of that. And uh, the DC Rotary budget allows for us to pay $495. So uh, 57 prizes out of 120 participants. Hello? How about B4? Each family is limited to four wins. And so the family that wins four uh, usually lingers on uh, in, in case somebody hasn't won, they will donate a prize to someone else. Um, we, we play on, um, uh, on a, a, as we, we go along, but not everyone can win, but we have a great time. I get the opportunity to give you an uh, and, and in, and, and that's the free space. The free space is we have a small staff, and I want to thank Tom Napier and Tim Hurd for being permanently on call in case one of our members uh, can't come. But you're all welcome to join us every third Thursday at six o'clock to seven o'clock um, to play virtual bingo with Walter Reed, Wounded Warriors, and their families. Thank you. Bingo. Thank you. Uh, Shelly, Darren, and Holly. Great to see you. So Marilyn, if you would, for community service grants. So community service grant cycle starts December 1st and ends January 31st. Over the last few months, the ad hoc committee has been reviewing the application, enhancing it. The ad hoc committee is being led by Elise Egan and Todd Miller, and the committee members are Linda Solomon, Jill Kent, Lynn Hollick, myself, and myself and Sterling Hoffman. And uh, what we do is that we review the entire application. We make sure uh, to address questions that have been raised in the previous cycle review process and uh, basically uh, enhance and elevate our application uh, and which should be ready to go December 1st. The Community Service Grants Committee has a $180,000 budget from the foundation. It is the largest. So therefore, we invite everyone in this club to participate in the review cycle. Last year, we received 122 applications. Who knows this year with the amount of PR we're promoting, it will receive more. We have over 30 committee members. All are welcome. You'll receive an email, and, I'll, and that's it for me. Um, you'll be hearing from me shortly. Thank you. Fantastic, Marilyn. Great job. Uh, I know uh, you have a lot of dedicated volunteers from our membership who do the review of the applications and uh, will be posting information uh, about the deadlines and everything. Thanks again. Regarding the dictionary project and when it might be started and some of the challenges of getting it started. We now have um, bookmarks to go along with the dictionaries, a uh, little project that she's done, very nicely designed. Uh, with some very helpful information on the bookmark as to how to use the dictionary. And uh, we are working with the DC public schools and charter schools to get permission, first of all, to be able to deliver the dictionaries to the schools and hopefully 
in many cases to be able to hand them out again. Um, in many ways, it's our largest project in as much as it involves the largest number of our members. Those of you who are new to the club now should have a much better idea of what makes us tick. <laughs> All right. And uh, I want to thank everyone for their participation today. It's just a fantastic club that we have. And I thank all of you for your participation and support in different shapes and forms uh, in making us the club we are.